Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be combining both the Lattice 2 and the Curves Workbench together. We're going to be looking at Curves on Surface or Sketch on Surface, but we're going to use Lattice 2 elements to create features in there. We're really interested in looking at a reference image. So this is the reference image I'm using and I've traced just this small part of this reference image scaled it to the correct scale and used it with lattice 2 to repeat the pattern around this surface and to seamlessly join these together so there's no seam as you can see around here this is really easy to do once you know the workflow you don't have to do any calculations of how far the way they're going to be it's pretty simple we're going to be using both the lattice 2 the curse workbench the sketcher and the part workbench and not forgetting the image workbench to scale that reference image so this is just a reference image of a tire that we used in here with this workflow we can do tires we can even do craft rollers so if you think about rollers that we use for clay or even cooking if we want a pattern on a pie or a pattern on a biscuit then we can use this one thing we can use it for in clay is something like dragon scales. So we could create dragon scales and roll that across the clay to create that texture in our clay. Today we're going to be looking at a tire. So a tire tread to create. And I've just used a simple tube on here. But this will be basically your model that you want to create where you've unwrapped that surface. And we can create that upon there. We'll go through all of that in this video. So enough of the introduction, let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using both the Curves Workbench and the Lattice 2 Workbench. And these are available from the Tools Add-on Manager. And we can install them from here. Now, in other videos, you probably see me create, say, in the Part Workbench, a cylinder and unwrapped its surface and added sketches and objects to that surface to wrap it around the cylinder. We're going to be doing something slightly different today. We're going to be doing a similar workflow, but we're using the Lattice 2 workbench along with the Curves workbench. This allows me to create repeating patterns like tire treads and a request that I've had before regarding clay rollers. So craft rollers to make stuff like dragon scales and effects for clay pottery. I'm in the part workbench at the moment and we're going to create our base object which is going to be a cylinder. We're going to go through a cylinder for the time being. I'm going to add some width and dimensions to this. Let's go for the radius of 20 and a height of 80. So we've got our cylinder here. We're going to go over to the Curves workbench now. now I'm going to create two sketch on surface. We normally create one, but I'm going to create two this time. And there's a reason for this. So I'm going to click on that surface and create a sketch on surface. I'm going to come into the sketch on surface and rename it straight away to scaffold sketch on surface. And if we come inside, we see the map sketch within. Right click, rename, and I'm going to call that scaffold map sketch. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because we need something to hang the lattice two elements off. And we can't really do that with a single sketch on surface. Because what I want to do, if I come in here, I want to take the unwrapped surface, as you can see here, and create geometry on here so it's shown. Now I'm going to use a rectangle and create some geometry on here. What this allows me to do, as you can see that rectangle is there, if I hit close. And if I come into the scaffold map sketch and press the space bar, we see the sketch here. And this allows me to place something on top of here 
and map it to another sketch on surface. So I'm gonna take this surface again and unwrap it. Now, why do I do that? Well, it's because if I come into the scaffold sketch on surface, and if we add items on here, and then say, fill the faces as true, and with a thickness, say two, then you can see what's happened in here. We've actually offset our scaffolding and any elements that we have in here that we've created upon here won't actually take properly. Let's close that. You'll see them just basically embedded as faces in there. And we get this effect. So we've actually cut this out from this shape because we've added it in there, which is not what we actually want. Because the workflow that I'm going to follow, i come back into this and get rid of this object in here. The workflow which we're going to follow, let's close that. And you can see we've still got the extruded scaffolds in sketch there. And I want to place something upon here. I want to put an array upon here. So an array of something that I'm going to use the lattice workbench for. And basically what this will allow me to do, let's come into the sketcher and create a sketch along the XY plane, the same plane as what we're looking down on. Let's place some circles in here. And if I had this and added this to the surface, if it was an external shape, rather than adding it to this map sketch, I can click on that scaffold in sketch on surface or the sketch on surface and come down to the extra objects and select the sketch and OK. Click off. You can see, well, we've got them on there, but we've got a problem. They haven't been extruded or cut into that surface. The geometry around the outside that we use to understand whereabouts this is has basically merged with those faces. It's along the same line as those faces. We don't want that. If I hide that cylinder, we can see what's happened in there. So this is no good to us. We can't even take that scaffolding sketch and basically remove it from there. The only way we can do that is say, come over to the part and use the part compound, explode compound. And then what we get is the shapes here. We can do it that way and let's hide those like so. And you can see, well, that didn't even work that way, but we do have something to boot in away from this. So I can take all of these parts that run around here, which was from our sketch, which was part of that extra objects that we added in there, and take those compound together, part, compound, make compound. So we just got them separate from this one here. So I'll press the spacebar on that, you can see them disappear. And we can take this part, control select the compound and do a cut. So we cut that away from there. So we can do it that way, or we can be a bit more clever and add another sketch on surface. So I'm just going to come in and just control Z those until I get back to where it was before. I don't need this sketch, so let's get rid of that sketch. That's gonna break something by actually control Z. So we can see the extra object there is no longer present but we've got our cylinder inside and we've got that scaffolding sketch with our rectangle around the outside. So to use something like the lattice 2, we can create an array in here and assign it to the cylinder. So let's come back into the scaffold sketch and press the space bar. And let's come back over to the Curves Workbench and take the cylinder again and use the Sketch on Surface. 
So we've done exactly the same again and our map sketch will sit in exactly the same place. But this time we're just using the previous one, the scaffolding, as guidelines. Reason why we want guidelines is because if we come out to the lattice 2 then we can attach something to here. We're going to start over in the sketcher. So let's come into the sketcher. Now remember if we view toggle access cross we can see our point of origin is here. And this is important when we're doing repeating features. So I'm going to create a new sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. So we're there and let's come over to model, click the cylinder and press the spacebar. Now I'm going to create a repeating feature and I'm going to use the point of origin to do this. So I'm going to come in and create say a rectangle in here and I'm going to pull in this line here and create a rectangle that's connected to this line. Look at the tasks. I've got the auto constraints on. So when I hover over that, you can see I get a point on object constraint. And we'll come up and we'll create something like this. I want to repeat this pattern all the way to the right. We can add some constraints in here if we want. So I'm going to take these two, put them in line, and make sure that these two are equal. And let's do some height equality in there as well. So we get this kind of effect and let's take this point and this point coincident we've got something else selected there so we've got that selected we can see that line there coincident that's there and we can adjust these and place them where we want so if I had this pattern here you notice I've gone from the point of origin that's important let's close that now so we've got the sketch we can see the scaffolding sketch behind there I press the space bar you can see it hidden We've used the scaffolding sketch to attach this to, so we know it's going to be in the right place when it's mapped to our surface. So at the moment, if I try to map this to this sketch on surface, well, we'll only get these. I'm going to come over to the Lattice 2 workbench, and I'm going to create a linear array. So this icon here, linear array. I'm going to select one of these edges. So I'm going to select this edge, that runs along here. Lattice 2, linear array, and we can pick whatever ones we want from here. I always go for the top one, so we've got that there. So we've got the linear array that goes along the top. Now, if we select the sketch that we want to array and control select the linear array and come up to lattice 2, and then we come down to the populate with copies and populate with copies, we get the copies of this going to the right. Don't worry if we go off the end, that's fine. So this is evenly spaced it across this rectangle. Therefore, we can use that on our sketch on surface. The cylinder is hidden. So remember we got the mapped sketch on surface here. Let's hide that just to make sure that we don't pick the wrong one and I'm going to select the sketch on surface and the extra objects click that and now we can use the populate linear array with sketch and hit OK and click off this here was our cylinder so you see the cylinder is hidden press the spacebar and we can see how that's gone around that cylinder now, if we take that sketch on surface and look at the fill extrusions, fill faces, let's set that to true and set the thickness to something like one millimeter. And you can see now we've got this pattern that goes all the way around here. So we use the linear array to control the pattern on that surface. Now, if we take that linear array and increase the number of elements. Well, it's not this one because this is read only. You can see that's read only there. If we come down to count, and somewhere in here, and set this to seven, and click off, then we get the pattern going around the cylinder from the linear array. 
So we've used two sketch on surfaces, one for the scaffolding, which is used for the placement, pulling in geometry for the sketch, etc. And then the other is the one that we actually attach to via the external object. So this one here. And you can see we've got the external object is the product of that linear array. We're not restricted to one extra object. We can have multiple in here. So let's just hide that populate linear array. Let's hide the sketch as well. And hide, well, let's hide the linear array as well. And bring back the scaffold map sketch, this one here. And I'm going to create something else. So we've got this at the moment. Let's come over to the sketcher and start thinking about, well, what else do we want to create on here? Let's create another sketch along the XY plane. And, well, let's place some other objects in here. So let's bring in the bottom line and decide what we want. So actually, let's bring in the sideline as well. So let's bring in the sidelines. And I'm going to have a line running down either side, something like this. And touch it up. If the cylinder's getting away, just press the space bar and the sketch on surface, press the space bar as well. So we've got these here. And let's escape that. And click on these to make them equal. Place a height in there if we want to, but I'm just going to place them somewhere over here. We can strain these right down if we want to and hit close. So what we've got now is this sketch and we've got the populate linear array and you can see what's going to happen now. So we can take that linear array and the sketch and have them mapped. We've already got the linear array with the sketch mapped. So let's bring back the sketch on surface, this one here, and let's bring back the cylinder as well. Click the sketch on surface and extra objects come in here. Press the button on the end and include our new sketch and OK. After it's recomputed, we can see that we've got another set of lines in here. So we've got those lines in there. So now our sketch on surface includes these elements. If I wanted to send the thickness backwards, if I do a minus on there, that's gone inwards like so. Therefore, I can come over to the part workbench. Click the one I want to keep, the cylinder. Control click the sketch on surface. When I do the cut, we're going to get a problem. So if I try to cut that, it's not going to work. Why is that? Because, well, basically we've got this object here and this object here. They're sitting together, but they're not fused. So I'm going to click on the sketch on surface and use the union. That means we've got a fusion now. So we've got this fusion here like so. Let's bring back the cylinder, click on the cylinder, control click the fusion and now make the cut. And we get the cut taking effect there. We have got extra faces but when this is 3D printed you won't see these. Now, as I said before, this comes in handy when we're doing stuff like rollers for craft or tire treads. So what I'm going to do now is go and find a tread of a tire and bring that in and recreate it using this method. As you can see, doing a quick search on Google, we get plenty of tire treads to look at. And we could use any one of these. Remember that if you're looking through these, you can just screenshot one of these and bring this into your FreeCAD model and use it as a reference material. So I've signed a new document and I'm gonna add a tube. 
And this is what we're going to use for our tire. So remember, this is a demonstration of how to do the tread. It's not actually building a tire from scratch. We're just interested in that tread. I'm going to do the outer radius as 80. The inner radius as 75. And the height is going to be something like 25 millimeters. So we've got this here. Let's make this a bit bigger. Let's go for 50 millimeters. So this will be the start of our tread. So okay that. And straight away, we're going to unwrap this surface. So using the curves workbench, and we're going to use the sketch on surface after selecting that face. This is going to be the scaffold. And inside here is the map sketch, which is going to be the scaffold map sketch going to hide the main scaffold just leaving the map sketch and press the space bar to show it now I'm going to come in and we're going to use the rectangle and connect up with the auto constraints on to these two points here hit close so we have our guidelines of where this is going to sit it's so going to sit in here. Let's hide that tube. Now what we want to do is bring in an image that we can use as reference. I'm going to use the image workbench. So down to image. And I'm going to use this icon here, which is scale and image plane. After we first imported an image using this icon, Let's create an image plane. Click on that and find the image that we want to import. I'm importing a screenshot. I've taken from a website on the XY plane. So the same plane as what this is on. Let's OK that. Here's my image. And I'm going to take that image plane and right click transform and rotate this around the right way. Let's hit OK. Now I've got to scale my image to the correct scaling. To do that, well, I'm going to transform this out of the way slightly because I'm going to use this line in here let's come up to view toggle axis cross and turn that off so we have the image here now I'm going to use the scale so make sure nothing's selected use the scale so scale the image plane we need a distance for that, I'm going to take this line here, the distance of this line. Let's come in and see what distance that is. So this line here, it's actually was well, the same as this one. So this is 50 millimeters. Let's close that and scale this image. So click on it, scale the image. And we want to go from this point. You see we've got a red line to this point. So the height of the image, distance, 50 millimeters, and hit OK. Saying select image plane, we haven't selected yet, so let's select that image plane, and hit OK. So this is now scaled. If I transform this by right clicking and transforming the image plane, you can see how that fits nicely in there. So we've got something to trace or use as reference when it comes to creating our pattern in here. That's OK that. Let's click off and bring back the tube. Now we've got our reference in the form of the image and the guidelines. Let's come back over to the Curse Workbench. We're going to unwrap this tube again. So click on it and click on the sketch on surface. This is now unwrapped inside here. So we will be adding our extra objects to this sketch on surface. Let's hide this tube. And I'm going to work on this image plane. Click top, making sure nothing's selected again. Come over to the sketch. And let's come in, zoom in. Create a new sketch along the XY plane. 
and we can start sketching in some of these shapes. So I can see this is a repeating shape. And looking at it, well, we can get away with using the polyline tool. I've got the auto constraints on. We'll connect up to here and to here. Remember, we're creating closed geometry. And maybe I need a curve in here, but we can just trace along here. So looking at this, it does curve round, but I'm just going to put a polyline in here, one in there, come across, use a beast line if you want. And I'm just tracing the outline of this shape and connecting back up. So that's our first shape done. We look for the other shape, the other repeat. So I'm looking at this, we could do this one, but I'm going to do this one over here. And come in and trace the shape. I want to pull in this line really, so I'm just going to put a line across here and we'll pull that in a moment. And just roughly pulling this in, you can take more care. Hit escape, hit escape again. Let's pull in some geometry, so pull in this line, hit escape, and connect this point to this line with a point on object constraint. That will do me, let's hit close and then click on that image plane and press the space bar. So we've got this pattern here in this sketch. Rename that to pattern sketch. Now let's think about what we need to do with the Lattice 2 workbench. So come over to the Lattice 2 workbench and I'm gonna pattern this sketch. So taking this top line, I'm going to click on it and come up to Lattice 2 and create a linear array and a linear array span in. So we get our linear array going across the top. We've got these marker size. We can reduce these marker size down on the linear array if we wanted to. Say one millimeter, so you can see them in there. Let's place these at something like five mil and you can see them going all the way along there. It just gives you an idea of whereabouts the linear array is going to place all these along here. Let's take the linear array, control click the pattern sketch, and come up to lattice 2, populate with copies, populate with copies. You can see they've been populated with copies along the top, but this is not a problem in that we can take the populate linear array and right click transform and move this into position. So I'm going to move it into position here. Now it's in position, let's hit OK. And we're going to come into the populate linear array in here, click on the linear array and increase the number of instances. So let's come down the count. Let's bring this up so let's go to about, I'm pressing the up button and hit refresh. In Ubuntu it's Control R or Linux versions. In Windows, it'll be something different. So I'm just increasing this to the right amount. So I'm just bringing that tread count up. So 25 will place me here. Now, if we look, you can see it's gone over the end. That's absolutely fine. Let's take the populate linear array and right click transform and move this so it's round about just coming off the edges. So this will wrap around because of the linear array. Because it's done the span across this object, so it should be in the right place. That's okay. So this should repeat fine. Let's come into the pattern sketch and press the space button. So you can see now the pattern we have going across here is repeated nicely. Let's test this out. So that's come up to the populate linear array with pattern and add it to our sketch, not the scaffold sketch. So I'm going to hide the scaffold sketch, get out of the way. So we've got this one here. Let's bring back the tube. So we've got the tube here. Click the populate linear array with pattern sketch. So this is the one we're going to place on this sketch on surface. Select the sketch on surface, extra objects, Click on the button on the end and select the populate linear array with pattern sketch and hit OK. Let's click off and it may take a little while to attach it to here so you can see it's attached and we are now attached to that tube. 
come up to that sketch on surface and now we can start playing with the fill faces and I'll set that to true. Quick enough, you'll see these faces will be filled. It takes a little while, you can see them filled in there. Now let's come into that sketch on surface and change the thickness to something like one. Click off and the thickness has been applied. We can see we've got an error. So if we hover over that, you can see we've got self intercept error. Let's take a look at what we got. So I'm gonna bring back the scaffolding. So come in here and click on the scaffolding. Now this self intersecting error might be to do with how we've intersected these parts here. Let's check that. So I'm gonna come into that sketch on surface and come to the extra objects and just clear those out. Just hit clear and okay. So we got rid of those. This won't update until we've reapplied it. I'm gonna come into the linear array, right click transform and just move this forwards. So when we look what we've got now is that we haven't crossed over. Let's leave that there. That's it, okay. So taking that linear array and using the sketch on surface, let's create an extra objects on there. Populate linear array with pattern sketch, okay. That's on there now. We'll just wait for that to take effect. That has now taken effect and we've got the tread that's attached to there. So the problem we had is that this was overlapping. So let's check around our tread and see what we got. We look like we're okay around that tread. So all we've done is made sure that we have this part here is actually in here because before it was overlapping on this side, which was causing our problem. It doesn't matter about this side, it's absolutely fine, but we get the continuation we want with our tread going around like so. So you can see that's nicely all around there. It's continuous and we should be able to see the seam somewhere. Where is it? There it is there. That's the seam where it comes down across here and you can see Wheel continues going around here. So that's how to get a lattice two objects around a cylinder or a tube to create this tire effect from a traced image. If we want to get rid of this, let's hide the linear array and the populate linear array. We also don't need this sketch, which is a scaffold map sketch. Now we're down to just the tube and the sketch on surface. If I hide the tube, then we've got this in here, which when it comes to 3D printing, obviously that's not gonna be any good. So we've got to combine these two back to the part workbench and take the sketch on surface and the tube and union those together. We've now got our finished fusion that we can export out for 3D print. So I hope that video was of help. I hope that shows you new ways of using the Lattice 2 workbench and that curve on surface to create the effects that you want and a bit of tracing in there as well. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.